Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Just one verse. Um, and this month, I want to tackle a, a, a theme of holiness. Tell your neighbor, holiness. holiness. So this month, we're going to be tackling the theme of holiness. What it really means, what it doesn't mean. Um, and then my hope is that as a church, like I said, we are on a journey together. And we want to grow in our walk with God. Nobody wants to stay the same. We want to grow in every aspect of our walk with God. And, and, and as a church, we are growing together, drawing closer to God every single day, so that everything we'll, we do will be for Christ. Hallelujah. That's why we are all for Christ International. Everything we do is for Jesus. Amen. So Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. And the title of today's message is The Pursuit, the pursuit of Holiness. The Pursuit of Holiness. The Pursuit of of holiness. Um, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. The Bible says, pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Hallelujah. So, so there is a calling over your life as a Christian, as a believer. There is a calling over your life for you to be holy. God is calling you to be holy. And that is the calling on your life as a Christian. And in a world today, we, are, we have moved so far away from that call. In a world today, as you see society, as you see in our relationships, as you see in our homes, in our families, we are moving so far away from that call. And so nowadays, when you go into relationships, there's no, holiness is no longer a, a thing. We don't care about holiness anymore. So in relationship, whether you're dating, whether you're whatever, you do whatever you want because it is how it is. And we want to follow the things of the world. And so holiness is not in our relationships anymore. So there are couples, when we date, when you do all these things, there's so many things that God does not want you to do, but we don't care about that. We just do whatever we want to do, what our flesh wants to do. And we are brought that into our relationships. In marriages, holiness is not, is not hallowed anymore. People don't respect marriages anymore. So in marriages, there's all kinds of things. Husbands, how they treat their wives. Wives, how they treat their husbands. All kinds of things because holiness is not a thing. Holiness is nothing in the homes. Nowadays in the homes, when you go, there's more worldly things than godly things in the home. And then we wonder why sometimes our children grow up and become all kinds of things. It's because of the things that they are seeing or the things that we are bringing them up in, in the home. And in our workplace, in all kinds of places. So as a believer, we have let go of the thought of holiness. We have forgotten about the call of holiness. Nobody cares about holiness anymore. But the Bible is saying here that without holiness, you will never see God. So that's the, the most important aspect of your life. And now sometimes we wonder, why, why, why am I not seeing God? Why am I not seeing God in my marriage? Why is my marriage in all kinds of places? Why am I not seeing God in my children? My children will grow up and all of a sudden they want to do something else that is in the world and not in Christ. And you start asking yourself these questions. Why am I always suffering? Why am I dating all kinds of people? And you are, because holiness is not there. Because the Bible says without holiness you will not see God. See, God wants to bless you. God wants to, to, to show you so much things. But the aspect you need to see God is holiness. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor holiness. holiness. So holiness, it is missing in our world today. It's missing in our church. It is missing everywhere. So we are not seeing God because there is no holiness. Where there is no holiness, there is no God. So I want to talk to you today about the pursuit of holiness so that you can see God in 2024. So that you can see God in your life. You can see God in your marriage. You can see God in your children. You can see God in your home. You can see God in every area of your life. Amen. So, so holiness, number one, the first thing that I want to clarify is that holiness, what holiness is not? Holiness is not hypocritical. Hallelujah. Holiness is what? It's not hypocritical. See, holiness, uh, the Pharisees, when you look in the Bible, they place their holiness on external ceremonies. That, and they kept the law. See, when you read the Bible, Pharisees, they were very good people on the outside. They knew the Bible from A to Z. They knew all their laws and what they had to do. 
They kept the Sabbath. They did all the ceremonies. Hallelujah. And, and the Bible said they did things just to be seen. Matthew 23 verse 5, it says, But all, but all their works they do to be seen by men. They make their, their, their phylacteries broad and enlarge their borders of their garments. So, so everything that they're doing is just on the outside. To appear holy. They want to appear holy to people. They want to look good on the outside. Jesus said in Matthew 23 verse 27, uh, the Bible says that what to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside you are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men. God said in the Pharisees, outwardly you appear holy. You look holy. You dress holy. But inside, you are full of hypocrisy. Inside, you are full of hypocrisy. And that's why Jesus had such a big problem with Pharisees. Because they like to look good on the outside. But what they were doing in secret, hallelujah. They, well, they, 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 they love to do long prayers. They like to appear to all these things. But deep down, they were taking advantage of women, widows. They were stealing money. They, they, they were doing all kinds of things. And, and, and the thing is, they think that by doing those right outside things, it will make them holy. So they have placed their holiness on the things that they do. But I want to tell you that holiness is not hypocrisy. Hallelujah. And there are people in this world that have placed their holiness or their standing with God on what they do on the outside. See, coming to church does not make you holy. There are people that they love Sunday day. I'm going to church and I'm going to church. I'm going to church. And they, they want to broadcast. Oh, I'm, a church I'm a church goer. I'm a church goer. I watched this Ghanaian movie. This woman, she loves going to church. But when she comes home, she's always fighting with her neighbor, gossiping about her neighbor. Holiness is not what you do on the outside. Hallelujah. And some people that come to church every Sunday on time. They come all the time. But what they do behind the scenes... Giving to the poor does not make you holy. You know what some people like to do? Like to, to, to maybe once a year, whatever, celebrities especially, they will be spend maybe one million dollars, whatever, and just go give to the poor and help people and do all those kinds of things. That will not make you holy. Because it's not what you do on the outside. That is not holiness. Hallelujah. It's not what you do on the outside. Tell your neighbor, it's not what you do on the outside. Being a good person does not make you holy. I'm telling you that the people come to church and what they do in secret, and people be like, oh yes, me, that's why I don't go to church. I just stay at home. I don't hurt anybody. But that will not make you holy. There are some people that morally, they are good. They are good people. They don't hurt anyone. They just mind their own business. But good is not holy. Hallelujah. So whether you are good, whether you are churchgoer, whether you do all these kinds of things, that is not what will make you holy in your life. Hallelujah. Say holiness. That is your goal as a Christian. That is your goal. And then the Bible says, in 1 John, so if someone says, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? You want to say, oh, I love God, I love God, but then deep down you are fighting, you, you are abusing people. You want to say, oh, I love God, I love God, I love God, then you are, you are abusing your own parents. You don't even respect your parents. Oh, I love God, I love God, I love God. Well, and, 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 and then when somebody needs to help you, the way you insult them, I love God, I love God. But then you plan for someone's downfall. God saying that you are a liar. See, holiness is not what you do on the outside. God does not care about what you do on the outside. Because it will never make you holy. It's not what you do on the outside. It's not what the thing that you do that you think is good. No, that is no holiness. Hallelujah. And that's why God said that people that do things on the outside, they are lies. And the thing is, God knows secrets. God knows your heart. God knows what you are doing behind the scenes. He sees everything. He sees every single thing, even your thoughts, he knows. That's crazy, right? God even knows your thoughts. So when you think you're giving to the poor and that's making you holy, God knows your thoughts. When you think that you're looking good on the outside, God knows that deep down you are nothing. 
Hallelujah. As a man that, uh, um, uh, they, uh, there was this, my, my, one of my friends, he said, my, my dad, he, he, he loves to do good to people on the outside. But when he comes home, the way he abuses his children, doesn't care about his children. Why? Because he wants, to be, he wants people to see that he's a good person. But then when he comes home, he's, for, he's forgotten his children. Hallelujah. So on the outside, you think, oh, this man is a good man. He helped me one time. He did this. But in God's eyes, he is nothing. Because of what he's doing behind the scenes. Hallelujah. So this year, let holiness be your portion. Strive. Bible says, strive for holiness. Because without holiness, you will never see God. So you can you say, oh God, I'm doing all these good things. I'm doing this, but nothing's happening. It's because of you are not holy. You are not holy enough. Hallelujah. And holiness is not perfection. Holiness is not perfection. I'm going to break it down for you to understand. Holiness is not perfection. God is not expecting you. When, if The Bible says pursue holiness. It doesn't say pursue perfect holiness. Perfect holiness cannot be attained. Otherwise, all of us will be disqualified. But there's something that you can attain. That is holiness. And God said without that, you would never see God. Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. So those kind of people, they will never see God. Why? Because the Bible said that God cannot dwell in darkness. God, darkness cannot approach him. God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. So, so everything that we do in secret that is bad, the outside cannot make it right. The outside things you do will not make it right. So, so inside is darkness, so that means that God will not be there. So if your home is dark, God will not be there. If your mind is dark, Towards your brother, towards your family, towards your wife, towards your husband, God will not be there. If your, if your family is dark, God will not be there. And it will come to a point where you will see that where is God? And it's because of your actions. Say actions. Hallelujah. So you will not see God in your daily life. And you will not see God on the last day. Because God said, many people say to me, Lord, Lord, Lord. And he said, I, would, I never knew you. But Lord, I did so many good things here. I don't know you. Because you were not holy. You did things just to look good on the outside. But deep down, you were hurting people. I didn't know you. That is a scary thought. For the last day, for God to tell you that I did not know you. Hallelujah. But I pray that that will not be your portion. And that God will know you. Because God is demanding holiness from you. Christian, if you call yourself a Christian. Maybe you're not a Christian. How many of you are Christians? Put your hand up if you're a Christian. I just want to make sure. So then if you are a Christian, then God is demanding holiness. If you call yourself a believer, then he demands it. He needs it. And holiness is not on the outside, but holiness deals with the hearts. Holiness is in the mind. Holiness is inside of you. And that is what God demands if you want to see God in your life. He demands holiness. Say, God demands holiness. So what is holiness? What is holy? Who is holy? Hallelujah. Holiness is the quality of God. Hallelujah. Holiness is the quality of God. And everything that God touches becomes holy. And the Greek word for holiness is hagios. And what it means is to be set apart. To be consecrated. To be dedicated. So it deals with the thoughts and the intentions and the heart. The heart has to be set apart. The body has to be consecrated. And the mind has to be dedicated. And God is holy. How many of you believe that God is holy? God is holy. God is holy. I want to show you the, 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 the highest form of holiness. That is God. Only God is holy. Hallelujah. God is holy. That means, when, so when you understand the Greek meaning of holiness, which is set apart, consecrated, dedicated, you understand that God is holy. That means he is far above and beyond anything that we can think or imagine. That means that God is unique and he is separate from creation. God created the world, but because he is holy, he is separate 
from creation. Hallelujah. He is not like the animals. He is not like people. He is not like the land. He is not like the sea. He is different from creation. That's what makes God holy. Hallelujah. God is the source of holiness. You know what they're doing in heaven? Revelation chapter 4 verse 8. That's what they do. The four living creatures, they have six wings, full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day and night. And they are saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Hallelujah. God is holy. His name is holy. The Bible says in Isaiah 40, To whom then will you liken me? Or to whom shall I be equal? God is saying that I am not equal to anybody. You are not my co-equal. Some people have to bring themselves out like they are God. God, you are not, you are nothing. Hallelujah. There was a man who, who got everything that he wanted. So oh, my soul relaxed today. And God said, you fool, today I'll take your soul from you. One day, boom. The book of Nezah rose himself up like he was a god. And he wanted to be worshipped. And just one touch, God turned him into an animal. You, you, you cannot compare to God. Nobody can compare to God. Muhammad cannot compare to God. Hindu cannot compare to God. Nobody can compare to the power and the glory and the holiness of God. Hallelujah. So he said, who can, who can you liken me to? Who shall be my equal? First Samuel, what does Samuel say? There is no one holy like the Lord, for there is no one besides you. Nor there is there any other rock like our God. They knew it, that God, there's no one holy like God. Only God is holy. Hallelujah. Only God is holy. His dwelling place is holy. Where God dwells, because he is holy, it makes it holy. Isaiah says that, For that says the high and the lofty one, who inhabits eternity, whose name is what? Is holy. I dwell in a high and holy place with him who has a contrite and a humble spirit. God said that I dwell in a high and holy place. Heaven is holy not because of anything, but because God is there. So wherever God is, it makes it holy. Hallelujah. You want to, I want to break it down for you. Wherever God is, it's holy. Uh, when, when God showed himself to Moses, he said, Do not draw near this place. Take off your sandals. Why? For the place that you are standing is holy ground. This is why I don't play about with church. Because the moment I gather, God is there. And wherever God is, the place is holy. Hallelujah. Green Park is now holy, not because of anything, but because God is here. And the moment God touches down, the atmosphere changes and the place becomes holy. Hallelujah. So wherever God is, that place becomes holy. And that's why God said that you need to be holy. Because I cannot come in darkness. I cannot come when you are looking good on the outside, but inside you are doing things you should not do. Inside, maybe you are fornicating, you do not I will not come there. Hallelujah. So you have to be holy so that I can come. Because wherever I am, that is place is holy. So if you bring God to your house, your house will be holy. If you bring God to your children, your children will be holy. If you bring God to all areas of your life, it will be declared what? Holy. Hallelujah. Take off your sandals. For the place that you are standing is holy God. So what makes God holy? God is holy. Remember, holiness definition is that the quality of God. And God is separate from creation. That means he is different. So God is different. His character is different. God's character is different. One thing about God is what? He doesn't change. That's why he's different from me and you. If you think about yourself five years ago from now, have you not changed? Has your mind not changed? Has your views not changed? Even though someone, uh, this man said that um, my wife has been married to five different people and all of them were me. And what it means that over the course of our marriage, I've changed so much that my, my wife just had to deal with it. Because humans, we change. But God never changes. That's what makes him holy. He remains the same. What he has said from today, it will be the same forevermore. Hallelujah. Forever thy word is settled in heaven. Whatever he says, it is settled. And he will never change his mind. He will never change towards you. He will never change the blessing that he has for you. He will never change the love that he has for you. And that's what makes God holy, that he will never change. Hallelujah. God is wise. Oh, the depths and the riches and both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments. Hallelujah. God is wise. God is faithful. The Bible says, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. Hallelujah. God is good. Some said that, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. That's his character. 
He doesn't change. He is faithful. He is good. He's all kinds of things. So that, that's what makes him holy. And he is righteous. God is love. You know what makes God different from us? The Bible says that he makes his reign reign upon the righteous and the unrighteous. Even sinners get mercy from God. Before we, you were Christian, we do all kinds of things. But God still had mercy on you and kept you alive. God could have killed you in that instant, but he kept you alive. That's what makes him holy. He is different from creation. Hallelujah. And God is different in his works. He's different in his works. Remember your congregation, which you have purchased from of old. The tribe of your inheritance, which you have redeemed. So, so God is different from creation. He's different in terms of he brings salvation. He delivered people from the power of darkness. God is different in everything that he does. And he works miracles. He is holy because he works miracles. He does so many great things and God is pure. And because God is holy, everything, remember I said, God, the holiness is a quality of God. And he sets apart, he's different from creation. So everything that he touches becomes holy. Hallelujah. So now I want to, under, I want to show you who you are. Because whatever God touches, that is what makes him holy. And so in the Old Testament, the Bible says, And you shall anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them, that they may minister to me as priests. So, so in the Old Testament, God gave a command to Moses that anoints this, anoint that. Because everything that God touches, it was declared holy. And that holiness meant that it had to be different. So Aaron and his children had to be different from the rest of Israel. Because they were touched by God. And everything that God touches is holy. Hallelujah. Say holiness. So, so, so every, even the instruments, instruments crowning you are holy. For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore consecrate yourself, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourself with any creeping thing that creeps on the earth. For I am the Lord who brings you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. And in the Bible, even instruments, all kinds of things were dedicated to God. And they were declared because God chose them. And that's what he shows here. It was declared holy because God chose you. Because God is the epitome of holiness, only he can make you holy. And he made you holy by choosing. And he made Israel holy by choosing Israel. He made Aaron holy by choosing Aaron and his family. So whatever God touches, it becomes what? Holy. Hallelujah. So God said that you shall not touch anything. Consecrate yourself, for I am holy. You shall not defile yourself with anything. For I am the Lord of God who brings you out of Egypt. So now, if whatever God touches is holy, do you know that God has touched you? Do you know that there's a calling of God over your life? When I said, who's a Christian, you all put your hands up. That means you have been touched by God. That means God has put his hand upon you. Hallelujah. And that's what Paul understood. Paul understood this in Colossians. He said, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. God, because he loves you, because he is holy, because he loves you so much, he has called you from sin. He has called you from darkness. He has called you from evil. And he has brought you into his kingdom. So God has touched you. Tell your neighbor, God has touched you. God has touched you in your life. And because there's a calling of God over your life, you are holy. Because there's a calling of God over your life, you are declared what? You are declared holy. And that's what I want you to understand in your, in your work with God, is that you are declared holy. And the Bible says in 1 Peter, that you are a chosen generation, you are a priesthood, you are a holy nation as a believer. You are chosen, you are a priest, and you are holy. So God has given you holiness in your heart. He has given you his Holy Spirit. He has declared you holy. Hallelujah. So that you can see God in your life. So that you can see him. So that you can walk with him. So that you can experience him. So, so, so without holiness, you cannot see God. And that's why because you are chosen and God has given you that ability, you now have holiness as your portion. But now, but now, this is the call. But as he who called you is holy, 
You also be holy in all your conduct. It's not because you are saved, that's it. So God has called you. So there's a call of God over your life. So now in everything that you do, you have to be holy. You have to be holy. Hallelujah. So you have to be holy because it is written, Be holy for I am holy. And this is the holiness that you have to pursue. Holiness is a thing of the heart. It's a thing of what? Of the mind. And, 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 and the word here, I want to go to this, back to this slide so you understand what we're trying to say. Because the, the, the main text is, pursue holiness. Because without holiness, no one will see God. So the pursue part, that's what I'm saying, that God is not asking you to be perfect. The key word is pursue. And the Greek word for pursue is diako, which means you run after. You press on. So what happens is that because God is holy and he has called me to be holy and he wants me to be holy in everything that I do, I am, as a Christian, I have to run after holiness. I have to chase holiness. Hallelujah. I have to live in a state and an atmosphere that reflects my maker. I have to live a life that reflects my God. That reflects that I am a Christian. That shows that I'm not just good on the outside, but I am good on the inside as well. Hallelujah. So I do good. You know what chase, what running after means? It's like this. Have you ever been like, have you ever been in this situation? When you are late in the morning, you have five minutes left, the bus is about to go. And you see, the bus is looking, the driver is looking at you, you are also looking at the driver. But you are, there's a distance there, hallelujah. And what do you do? You don't care about anything. What you start doing is you are what? You start chasing the bus. You are running after it, hallelujah. And God said in that moment when you are running, you will be holy, hallelujah. Because you're not, you don't care about the outside. You don't care about what's going on. You are just running after something. So I do good, not because I'm a good person, but because I'm running after holiness, hallelujah. I come to church, not because I'm a good person, but because what? I am running after holiness, hallelujah. I treat people well, not because I'm perfect, but because I'm running after holiness, hallelujah. And there are times when I will fall down, and I will sin. But because God loves me, I will get up again and I will run after holiness. Hallelujah. That means every day of my life, I am running. I am chasing. I am chasing. I am running. And in that moment, you will see God. Amen. So God is not even asking for perfection. He just wants you to run after him. That's what he wants. Just run after him. Just chase him. Chase holiness. Let that be your mind. Let that be your heart. Everything that you do. Hallelujah. So, so, so I love, I, I love, I love, I love people. Not because I'm perfect, but because I'm trying to run after holiness. Hallelujah. I love my wife. Not because I'm trying to be perfect, but because I'm running after holiness. Because God said that if I don't love my wife, I shouldn't even pray. If, 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 if a woman, you don't submit to your husband, don't even bother praying. That's what God said. So because I want to see God, I have to run after it. So that means that it changes your mind. It changes your heart in everything that you do. And you start doing things differently. And you no longer try to be good on the outside. Because you will never claim to be perfect. But what you're doing is that, you know what? I know I'm not perfect. But I'm, I'm not going to stand still. I'm not going to go backwards. I've made so many mistakes in my life. We all have histories. We all have things we are ashamed of. But that will not hold me back anymore. I will let go of all of that and I will start running after holiness. And the moment I start doing that, then you will see God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Give a clap of offering unto Jesus. <laughs> Give a clap of offering unto Jesus. So 2024, just run after holiness. Pursue holiness. Run after it. Chase holiness. Chase the character of God, the things of God. Just run after it and you will see God in your life. And you will see the doors that he will open for you in your life. Hallelujah. Be on your feet and let's pray. Be on your feet and let's pray. Be on your feet and let's pray. The, um, the instrumental. Yeah, be on your feet and let's pray. I want you to pray. God, I am running after you. I am running after your holiness.